maybe I have four slides. Can I send the slides to you? Or uh, one sketch? Uh, there you go. Mä olin menossa keittää kahvia, niin mä olin tehnyt. Tää teipata lattia niin kuin omalla. Sen takia mulla oli just tämmönen disokko. Mulla on koko reppi, missä oli vielä nää artikkelin. Arvitsen, että on tärkeää siihen meidän. Joo. Ja näki, että hän ei teki mieli, mutta, mutta tuota, näitä saa työntää suorastaan näitä brasilialaisia miehiä. Ota vielä vähän katsotaan, kun he kokevat. Joo, okei. Okay. Minkä on syydet? Minkä on syydet? Minkä on Me laserattiin, että tässä on Sami ja Jirin konferenssi ja catering palvelu. Okei, okay. no niin. Let's try to call it with a tool. Tässä oli suhteessa. Siinä olisi kirjoittaa, mutta aika ilmeisesti vähän muuttaa tässä kerralla. Niin, siihen tässä mitään. Paikka on varattu hirveästi. Mä tarkoitan, että miten me edetään tässä, että me autetaan. Joo, on vähän. Mutta tarvitaanko me mitään tuota niin. esittäytymisiä kyllä kaikki. Now we are trying to call no, Bulla. Siis voi kysyä yeah, sen, I että kun mä sen. I can see that on my screen. Okei. Okay. Lala. Okei. Okay. Hello. 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 Hello, Gunas. You are not sleeping? Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can call you very well. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, meeting. Uh, we are happy to have Albert here and we are, since the uh, initiative for our meeting uh, comes from him, I, I, I guess that we can quite uh, directly to go. I, I think everybody knows each other or yes. maybe yeah yeah okay then we need not to use time for that and we can go uh, we can go straight to, to Arto do you have uh, something to suggest for the schedule on how uh, long you will be able to be along with us I don't, I don't have any any special schedule. I think the only my, my only comment was that that being three three hours. Yeah, it's a very long time. I agree. <laughs> 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 but it's good. Uh, the, the next telecom that I have, I have is actually it's 
it's from three three hours from now. Okay. But of course, it's kind of um, it takes what it takes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's I'm flexible. Yeah. Good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, how so. about Gurnas? Uh, I have a whole night for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, do you know everybody who is here now? Yes, I met everybody. Yes, okay. and you know Laurie, of course. Yes, Yes, I met Laurie and we meet uh, social science. Uh, okay, so both everybody knows each other now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess okay. we can give you can uh, start. Yeah. Yes. So yesterday I exchanged uh, one email with uh, Arto and uh, I redefined the uh, meeting agenda and I think that it will be very important for us to discuss what is the Finland Quebec BIM gap about and second question is the activity theory framework uh, sufficient and adequate to study this gap. So I put the question that way, what is the gap about, how do we, the gap between AEC industry in Finland and in Quebec? In fact, our comparison is based on the assumption that things are so much better in Finland compared to Quebec, so the notion of a gap. But what is the gap following your understanding Arto, is it a matter of design, deployment, success in general, different implementation? What kind of data and literature is the description of the gap based on? And then we can discuss the second question about the activity theory as a framework. Is that okay for you? Yes, that's that's fine. And uh, as I as I replied yesterday to you, it's, uh, I don't know if I have the answers to every every question, but but of course we can we can discuss about those. Okay. And if I start about this this gap between the AEC industry and the use of of BIM in, in Finland and in in Quebec, Quebec or Canada in, or other countries. It's actually, first of all, of course, I don't know really, I don't know what is the exact situation in, in Canada. Uh, I, my, my assumption is that there are some companies that are using that. And if I look at on the global level, uh, I would say that the best companies who have deployed BIM are in many ways on the same level, regardless where, where they are. So the top in each country seems to be more or less on the same level. The, the thing that, that it's my very strong opinion is that, that uh, the, the Finnish advantage is, is in the average use of, of BIM. So the average is much higher than in, in most places. And, and that is something that, that, as I mentioned in the, the previous email where I, I tried to tell a, a little bit about the background, is that in, in Finland, first of all, the, the uh, interest in, in BIM, which was at that time called the, the building product modeling, it started very early. Already in the, the uh, media, mid and late 80s, VTT did quite a lot of research in this area. Matti Hannus, Bukhrister, Björk, Kari Karstila, and, and of course, Lauri, Lauri knows about that situation quite a lot because he was working at that VTT already at that time. And at that time, it was really just a research issue. It, it, it was really not something that the industry would have been very much interested in. The industry was some, on some level participating in the, the research, but, but not really deploying that because, first of all, we didn't have the technologies. But then in the, the mid-90s, the situation changed quite, quite rapidly because uh, TECES, our uh, technology agency that funding the research, they decided to put up a really big program uh, around BIM. And at the, at the same time, uh, International Alliance for Interoperability started. And now, nowadays it's called the Building Smart, but it's the same organization. And, uh, that created a very good situation that in Finland we had a lot of resources to, to do research and, and uh, uh, also development on that area and we had an international platform where we could be active. So I was actually the first international chairman of, of IAI uh, 
from 1998 to, to 2000. And uh, that was giving a really big boost to the Finnish uh, research as well because we, we really had a very good contact around the world and uh, it was also showing that this was not just a Finnish phenomenon so that also the Finnish software houses started to be interested in that and at the same time also the, the construction companies and also some designers got interested in that so we were able from 1997 to 2002 to create at the same time the tools and the demand for BIM. And that was then leading in, in the early, early 2000 uh, to some pilot projects which were very successful. And, and then uh, the industry started to, to seriously deploy the technologies in the, the activities. So it, it really is something that it, 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 it was very, very unique situation because normally the, the problem is that that big circle that, that you can't create the tools and the use of the tools at the same time. And that is creating a huge risk to the software vendors that if you start doing the new tools, you don't really know if the industry is deploying them and which, in, in which time frame. So you might be in the market too early and, and that's killing your product. But we were able to, to create that kind of imbalance between these, this supply and demand. So it, it was, uh, that's at least my, my feeling about the, the reasons why this happened. And of course, Vera, which I was leading in 1997-2002, it was a huge program. 47 million <coughs> euro investment in the research and development of, of BIM in a country of 5 million people. More than 160 projects. So this, this was really a very, very unique situation. Of course, now the, the situation is very different because uh, uh, at the moment uh, we, we do have the technologies. In the, the late 90s, a lot of uh, crucial technologies were missing. So the focus of ERA program was very much on the technological development. Now the, the technology is there, so now it's much more about the culture and, and business models and, and uh, other things. So I wouldn't replicate the, the, the program as such. I think that, that for example, the, the work that, that Gunas is doing now in, in her PhD is, is very important to really look at the human aspects of the, the implementation of, of BIM. Because I think that those are really now the, the questions. The technology is there, has been there already almost 10, 10 years, but the industry is lagging behind the technological possibilities. So it's a very different situation than it was 20 years ago. Okay, I think that that's okay. enough, so kind of let's move to discussion. Okay, I have maybe a question for you, Arthur. Uh, I read the paper by Rejo and Sami about uh, BIM Utopia. So, uh, did you meant that uh, Finland has a higher utopia about BIM than other countries? Uh, I, I think that, that uh, really the BIM is nowadays, in, in, to, at least to my understanding, is, is more kind of like business as usual in, in Finland. There are quite a lot of uh, companies, both designers, construction companies, who see that as a kind of an normal way to do the business. It's not something new and it's not something that they are testing because they have been doing that now for at least five, five to seven years. So it's, it's uh, that, I think that that is really the, the big difference that, for example, Skanska, I think that, that you will be interviewing their people, they are now doing all their own projects. So meaning the residential production where they are the project owners, all of those projects are done using BIM. And they are using BIM also in, in, in other projects, but of course, depending on the, the, how the project has started, it, the level of, of BIM, the level of the implementation, uh, depends on the, the team and the, the skills of the team and what's, what's available. Okay. And, and actually, one, one thing that, that you, in, in the end of your, uh, your question, you have this, what kind of data or literature we have. Uh, it's 
that is the, the difficult part. It, it's really uh, McGraw Hill is doing these uh, BIM uh, smart market reports relatively often from different markets. But they have never included, for example, the Finland or any other Nordic countries there. Their own, own research in, in Europe was covering uh, the big countries, UK, Germany, and France. So, and that was something like three, four years ago. Uh, now they have been looking at the situation in Korea. Uh, I think that also something from China. Of course, they are repeating those research in, in USA. Uh, but it's it's really there is not kind of a solid research data mm -hmm. that would be comparing different countries, and that's of course an interesting question. That that can that be part of of this research that you are now leading? Okay, Azuk, uh, you want to hear some feedback to your um, answers, or do you want to answer the second question? Okay, you, you think that, that we can move to the second question? Well, I, I think we, it should be uh, valuable to discuss about this because o, o, when Arthur sent the message, I was already thinking that it's a different thing that how the kind of advancement and institutionalization of BIM has taken place in Finland and let's say in Quebec. Mm -hmm. then, uh, the fact that in which way and level the firms are actually using it. And I, I think that uh, a kind of comparative history uh, from, from Europe is, is needed to understand the, the, the differences. So I'm wondering, but it, it of course uh, mean then maybe I could imagine that by interviewing Art or a uh, couple of key persons a kind of narrative about how being uh, emerged and developed in Finland could be. And it would be very nice mm -hmm. to have such a thing. Actually, Arto, you presented it, yeah. a kind of history already, but it, it, I guess it could be written down. But okay. have, a, uh, have a similar kind of history from Canada or okay. Quebec would explain a much because then it's a, another question when Arco said that now the question is the kind of organization or human aspects. And I think also that uh, uh, for us, for instance, and, and if we come later on to activity theory, it's interesting that how the use of BIM is organized in mm -hmm. firms and not so much thinking that it's higher or lower or it. Uh, if it's a kind of a fact that all the firms uh, think it's kind of natural thing to use it. But then the question is that in which way and how it's organized and how people learn to do it and things like that. And it even might be, uh, might be that it's very uh, hard to uh, trace only by interviewing one or two persons in a firm. We need observation. This, this was my kind of comment that yes. it would be a valuable part to have a kind of comparative history of the emergence mm -hmm. and development. Okay. So, Arthur, you want to hear more feedback? or? I, I, I think that, that uh, it, it's really, as I said, that, that um, it's, it's really very, very important to, to interview also other people. <laughs> As, <laughs> I, I, I gave my view, a very short view of, of, of the, the situation, but of course everybody is looking this from his own perspective. So yeah. really I think that, that the, the list of people that I have uh, already given, that, that people at Skanska, Tekes, some other people at that VTT, uh, also uh, maybe maybe some some software vendors like Tecla, Solibri. It it would be very good to, to have these different views because I think that the whole picture is coming from the collection of the different views because we are looking at the, that situation that we had. 20 years ago and, and what happened in the late 90s, early, early 2000, from different angles. 
So every, everybody has seen only some part of the, the total mm -hmm. picture. Of course, I had a very, very good position in that sense that I was involved in, in very yes. many of the projects. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at the development and, and what happened from very different position than most of the people. But still, it's just my personal view. And of course, it's, it's also our personal experiences uh, and, and personalities is also affecting the, the way that we see and experience the things. That's why I also was uh, giving the uh, information about the, the Vera Tech website and, and uh, okay. about the report that Thomas Frozen had been doing. Mm -hmm. I noticed also that you already recognized John Taylor's work. I yes. think that that's one of the, the also one of the key documentations because he was really looking at the comparing the situation in, in uh, Finland and, and USA in the early adoption of BIM, in what happened in the early early 2000s. And I think that, that he was he made some very good observations about the reasons for the differences. For example, the, the different business models, the different market size, uh, different uh, culture. Finland is a country which is very small, very small market. And uh, construction industry is very much based on, on trust compared to US situation. So, for example, I, I worked 24 years as a designer uh, before I moved into this world. And uh, I have never participated in any project where anybody would have been suing anyone. Mm -hmm. And if you tell that to somebody in US, they say that it's, it's not possible that you are working 24 years in the uh, construction industry and never involved in any kind of litigation. And that is, of course, creating a situation that you can easily test something new because you can trust that people are not suing you if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is part of this human aspect that we really have to do put the uh, uh, adoption of the technology into the context of the, the culture and the business models where we are working. We can't see them as a separate issues. Okay. Lauren? So, I think we, we need to focus on other question. What is the gap about? about? So, so I, I think you, Albert, have the kind of burden of Showing to your Canadian constituents that there, there is a gap, so so in, in, in it, we, we need to think how to respond. And uh, as discussed, so one way is to look at the leading companies in or company in each country, mm -hmm. like Skanska, and, and perhaps your company, and perhaps uh, there is a difference. The kind of average situation. It, it may be a bit more difficult, but, but somehow doable. But in addition to that, I, I think it's useful to have some indirect um, evidence, like whether there are specific BIM committees in, in construction engineering associations and, and other similar places. Uh, to which extent BIM has been included in, in, the, in the curricula of, of teaching institutions, to which extent there is domestic uh, uh, offerings regarding BIM mm -hmm. software houses and, and, and so on. And uh, perhaps generally this idea of an innovation ecosystem can be taken on so, uh, so it is about uh, describing how the different parts of the ecosystem which we may identify are doing regarding BIM at the moment. Shall we move to the second question with you, Arto? Uh, do you want to leave or uh, to stay for the second question? Yeah, uh, I, I think that it's, it's really... Uh, I know, uh, take, taking the last sentence there, that it should be based on active theory only. I don't think that it's possible. I think that, that we have to have a wider view, really look at uh, uh, 
Activity theory is, is very important part of that, but I think that it's also that we really have to look at the, the as, as you have the, the uh, uh, speak here, uh, you have the list of things that knowledge, context, artifacts, group interaction, cognitive structure, knowledge space, community, institutions, value, infrastructure, business ecosystem, uh, research theory. I think that research theory, I think that, that this is really important that we take this kind of um, multiple views because, uh, for example, business models, contractual issues are extremely important. In, in this context. Without the proper uh, contractual environment, it's very difficult to, to implement uh, the new methodologies and new technologies in the project. Just to take one example, that, that at the moment here in UK, there's quite a lot of happening uh, in looking at the different insurance models in the integrated projects. Because the current insurances for the designers are not covering integrated project delivery. And, and that means that, that the companies don't dare to do that because if something goes wrong, the insurance company says that, that well, that's your problem. We are not paying anything. So this is kind of a preventing the way of, of new working, in the, especially in the environment where the, the legal it's a part of the business. Are important. But like in, in yeah. almost any big country, that is something that is absolutely crucial. So we really have to look at this infrastructure and, and business ecosystem as a part of, of this. So what is the what is the, what are the mechanisms that are supporting people doing things in a new way? That's exactly what happened in in US when IPD, the integrative project delivery model, was introduced there, first by Southern Health, and, and then it was spreading to other institutions. Now, American Institute of Architects is having, having the IPD documentation on their website. And it's, it's a model which is emerging. It's not widely used yet, but it's, it's enabling the legal framework for the integrated projects. And now UK is, is trying to build the same kind of an ecosystem by 2016. So that, that we, would, we could move here also in, into that area. So I think that, that we can't ignore the business environment where we are working. And be... then, of course, the cultural issues and, and uh, those things are, are also extremely important because usually people are very resistant of, for the change. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, you, uh, I kind of hope that you could have specified why you think that activity theory would uh, be a kind of foundations for it. Because I, of course, I uh, agree that activity theory, its strength is when you look and study a local activity and how it's organized and how people enter and what kind of tools they use. But the projective model. Yeah, but yeah. In, in a way this ecosystem mm -hmm. level and the societal institutions, mm -hmm. I think activity theory don't have a specific contribution mm -hmm. to understand this ecosystem, uh, eco ecosystem there. Of course we can say that uh, uh, regulation and laws are parts of the rules that conditions mm -hmm. any activity and that uh, uh, contractual arrangements are uh, are important regulating uh, rules in in activity but it does not help to kind of making uh, making sense of the specificities of this contractual arrangement so to me uh, activity theory might be it's kind of a, a list of what kind of aspects should be analyzed but uh, kind of uh, in such does not provide uh, tools for uh, tracing uh, the parts of the ecosystem and okay. what is there. So I kind of agree that multiple ingredients in the framework are needed. And multiple scales. Scales, scales and also scales. Uh, also concepts. concepts. When, when we come to contracts Activity theory does not have any theory or contracts. 
then we have to go to the uh, juristic, juridical literature that speak about, well, for instance, relational contracts yes. and so on. We need uh, specific concepts to pick up the different aspects of the system. Yeah, yes, I agree that there cannot be one framework, but, but several ones. And, uh, I love to start from, from the long history. So, so actually, uh, so the Finnish people have always been a bit technology crazy. So telephone was here very rapidly after it, it, it was set up in, in the first time in, in the US, maybe in one or two years in Tampere there was a telephone line and, and, and so on. Uh, so of course it is a cultural feature that goes through, through, through history. Another thing uh, is, is this kind of collaborative, collaborative uh, culture in, in, in the industry, so taking part in, in, in common research projects and, 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 and so on. So the, these are kind of cultural factors, maybe well, partly historical. Then there are policy factors, and, and uh, if you go to the web pages of TECES, so the, there's much about the innovation system of Finland that they say that it's one of the best in the world. We don't know, but anyway they, they say that. So so you you, you should take a look at, at those claims and, and, and compare to, to what, what you have in, in, in Quebec. Uh, so this were well, so institutional history, culture, mm -hmm. policy level mm -hmm. need to be taken in. Yeah, it's a, I just want to comment when you take up, for instance, TECES. It's quite a unique institution. Uh, if we compare Sweden and Finland, the, uh, the organizations comparable to Academy of Finland deliver twice as much money as uh, their TECES, their Vinoa organization. It's reverse in Finland. TECES delivers twice as much money as the Academy of Finland. So it's a very, uh, and it came up when Arthur took that this, how, how many millions was put in the development of being. It's an example of the specific historical institutional fact, which is related to the technology policy in Finland. Tekes uh, is kind of main instrument, I think it's uh, in, in, in development that. Yeah. Arthur, shall we stop here for you, or do you want to hear some more comments about uh, question one or question two? Well, I think that, that I have been saying most of the, the things that I had in my mind at, at the moment, but it's, um, I, I fully agree with that, that Tekes, Tekes has been very instrumental for these technological changes in, in Finland. I think that it's... Uh, uh, it's really important to, to interview some people there, like like Reijo Kangas, who actually came. Uh, he was part of the Tevera program already, and, and he has been in the leading positions there. So he has a very good view of the big picture, what's what's going on. Also, uh, of course, also one one organization that I didn't mention in my email is is of course uh, RIM, this uh, research center or center of excellence, what you want to call it, for the building industry. Uh, they, they just uh, ended the pro uh, program called CREA, the construction process re-engineering, I think that that was the name. It was, we had the, the final meeting just two days ago uh, of that. So it's, it's uh, they, they of course are also now Kind of, and they have seen the recent development much better than, for example, I have. So it's 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 really important to try to collect these uh, different views about what has happened and, and where we are now. 
And then, of course, it's, it's the comparison between the countries trying to get a more objective uh, view about the le level of the, the, the use of BIM in, in different countries. And uh, uh, even, even I think that it's even, even important to, to challenge the, the view that is Finland as far as the, the image of, of Finnish use of a BIM? I think that there is always a, at least some height. So it's, it's always, always something that people want to give a little bit better picture of the situation than it is. Of course, the, the same applies to every country. So it's kind of, an, it might be that the, 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 kind of the comparison is, is real in that sense, that it's telling about the differences between the countries quite uh, truthfully. But uh, the, the image that you get from the people who are active in this field, it might, might be a little bit too positive. I remember once I was in a, in a conference where they were uh, making a presentation of the, the Boeing 777, which was the first totally digitally designed airplane. And of course, it was mind blowing what they did in that, and it was really a huge presentation. After that, I started to speak with the people who had been involved in the project. And they told me about exactly the same problems that I've seen in the construction industry. It wasn't as smooth as, as the, the picture that they publicly give about that. And I think that it's part of the human behavior is that, that we try to emphasize the good parts of the th things that where we believe in. Of course, it's, it's also in my, my speech that, that I, I really believe that this is a fundamental change in the construction industry and therefore uh, kind of um, try to support the idea that this is a good thing. And I think that this is also part of the, the evaluation that we have to always keep in mind. That It's the same also when you look at the smart market reports. If you look at the, the percentage of, of projects that are, are using BIM according to those reports, I think that it's, it's not true. I think that it's just, in many cases, companies say that they are using BIM if they have software that is enabling BIM, but it doesn't mean that they are using that in their real work. So going beyond the, the kind of the, the surface and really looking what's hap what's really happening in the companies, I think it's it's quite crucial. Yes, it's very important what you said. By comparing uh, Boeing and the construction industry. You mentioned implicitly the importance of a digital strategy for firms to, to go from a software to, to a practice without any digital strategy the firm cannot understand what it is doing with new new way of produce things. Sorry, was that, uh, I have, uh, some, th there is some echo, so I, I didn't quite, no. quite hear it. Was, th was there a question? I, I mentioned that uh, by comparing Boeing with the construction industry, you are, uh, in fact, underlining the importance of uh, a digital strategy for firms. Yeah, I, I think that it's really, if I, if I really think about the, the is, what, what is really important in our industry? I think that the importance is the uh, information management and communication. We have, well, construction industry is typically, it's very fragmented. We have huge amount of people who are involved in the, the design and construction process and in the use of, of the buildings. And, and traditionally, the problem is that the, the amount of information that we are producing is so huge that nobody really can find all the information. And also, people have very different skills of, of uh, interpreting the uh, uh, traditional documentation. And uh, the, one of the, the main things about the, the BIM is that it's improving the shared understanding. And that's already, as such, a huge 
step forward because when people see the problem in the same way, it's much easier to find a solution which is uh, fulfilling the different aspects of the problem. Because it's also that, that it's, uh, buildings are never optimal in that sense that they would be able to solve all the problems that are related to the use of the buildings. There are always some parts that, that are compromises. And the question is that, that what is more valuable than, than something else? So it's, it's really finding the compromise that is best for, from different viewpoints. And that is something, the communication and information management are, are really the issues. And at the moment, at least, PIM is a huge step forward compared to the traditional documentation. But as such, I, in this, I, I, that is one of, one of the things that I try to emphasize in my, my lectures when I speak about the BIM globally, is that BIM is not a goal, it's a tool. The mm -hmm. goal is to have a better built environment. Yes. And, and that, that should always be kind of an, uh, the, the focus should always be in that, that do we really improve the process to enable the, the better buildings? Or is it something that we do just as a technological gimmick? I would like to add to this that I, I, what I feel, how I feel it after doing field work now three years, and also discussing with my colleagues who are doing field work in different parts of, of a building project, that, that uh, it's a huge challenge to learn to do uh, learn to work in a new way because yes. you know people are uh, used to doing uh, they are used to, to different kind of uh, routines and routine ways of acting and uh, and uh, what what we have seen is that uh, uh, the use of beam uh, changes uh, these these ways not only you know what they do every day but the whole process they have to think about the process in a different way. And that, that's a very, very challenging thing. Because what I've yeah. learned from construction industry is that uh, it's not very reflective environment. And uh, people, you know, they, they do things uh, uh, and it, it's very implicit what they do. So, so uh, you just do things, or you you can cannot do things. And I think that Tarja might have many news she can she could share with us because uh, she's been looking uh, uh, BIM use in construction sites in seven companies. Uh, seven uh, sites. Seven sites, but they are in how many companies? Four companies. Yeah, I've been looking at the design process as Sami. And uh, Yiri has been looking at this uh, client uh, uh, user and design user, user interaction. Yes. For all code design. Yes, and Yiri <coughs> has been looking at the maintenance part. Yeah, so, I, so I, I couldn't agree more. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely uh, one of the, the big obstacles we have is this uh, resistance for the change. I, <laughs> I can't tell how many times I've got, heard of the comment that I have been doing this for 40 years this way and I'm, I'm not going to change it. So it's, it, is, it is really something that is very deeply inbuilt that people believe that the, the way that they have been doing is the wrong the only right way to do it, and any change is, is worse. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, it's, it's not true. <laughs> I can, I can, I, my history is so, so long that I can also remember, I was one of the first architects in Finland starting to use 2D CAD in, in uh, mid-80s. And I, all the time I heard from my colleagues, from other architects, that, that how can you start using computer? You can't make architecture with a computer. And that, that took more than 10 years to change that, that people accepted that computer is a tool for architecture. Actually, mm -hmm. that happened only because, the, or, or at least it speeded up the, the change that, that we had a regression in Finland in the early 90s. In 1991, a huge amount of architects were unemployed. And then people started to understand that they have to change their business to, to stay in the business. 
and, and that was speeding up the technological adoption. But, but it's, it's really very deeply inbuilt in the people's mind that, that I don't want to learn a new way of doing. I think that this is actually something that we can find in the literature uh, called competence trap. Persons who are experts in their field, they are afraid of the change because they are not sure if they can achieve the same level of expertise in the new environment. Yeah, exactly. This is. And then another, another thing is that it seems to change the relationships uh, in, yeah. in construction projects. Uh, That's also true. The position yeah. of different uh, different players is, is changing when they are using BIM. We have already seen that in, in one of our not working experiments that that um, the role of architects, for instance, it, it seems to be, they seem to lose power, so I don't know how eager they are uh, to use BIM. Yeah, so. Abs absolutely. That's, uh, that's actually something that, that it's, uh, this is partly happening because of the, the better understanding of the, the models than the traditional drawings. Mm -hmm. When I think about the situation, when I, when I was doing relatively big projects in, in the traditional hand drafting environment, and w when I went to uh, the, the uh, owner's representatives and, and showed my drawings, I had to explain my drawings. And when you are the person who are explaining the, the design solutions, of course you explain them in the way that, that you are steering the people to, to make the decisions that you want to, to make. So basically you have the decision power about the solutions. When people see and understand what is in the model, it's shifting the, the real decision power to those people instead of you. You can't explain it in the way that, that you think that they accept. And, and this is something that I have heard that some architects really complain about that. And, and this is, and of course this is just one, one, one detail in there, but, but in, in, it's, it's, uh, I, well, what you said is, is really that it's changing the relationships, it's changing the roles. Mm -hmm. And this can be something that, that people who feel that they are losing their position or, or some of the, the power that they usually have had, they are quite often against the change. Yes. It's a reason why we introduce the concept of uh, professional identity that can be uh, threatened by uh, information technology, like uh, in other industry or research center. The, those studies began in Hawaii with uh, oceanography. Some people be, uh, began to be expert in IT. They were no more on the ocean to make observation, but only using uh, data coming through satellites. And uh, their work changed quickly. And the real expert who, who became the, the, the expert using mostly uh, information technology and new software. So I, I think it's the same scenario maybe in the construction industry for the architect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, but I think that it's, it's, it's not only architects. I think that it's, it's really it's changing the group dynamics. And I yes. think that, that this is something where active mm -hmm. theory is, is providing a very good framework to look at that uh, the interactions between the different players and how the technology might be changing those. And then what is the, the effect of, of that, either the true change or the expected change? Because part of that is also is, is really that people are afraid of the unknown. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I guess that these aspects are difficult to make visible for reflection, and I think here activity theory uh, really can provide something that make visible you know, things that are kind of, kind of otherwise difficult to analyze or, or to speak of. Yes, yeah, so uh, Ardo thought that, that wood with the environment should be the objective 
and we are going to say that 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 is actually achieved through that process, which is nicely loose uh, word. So, and here we have kind of the academic problem and shortcoming that we tend to conceptualize that process from from our narrow viewpoint. So in, in Lean, we have been viewing that process as operations management or design and production process. And then it's, we collide to, to other things. And, and now in Lean Construction, we realize that there is social process and, and there is this contractual or commercial processes, contracts. And, so on. And to have lean operation processes, so there, there is a need for, for new social processes and, and new contractual arrangements. And actually, of course, information management is not visible in any way in, in this conceptualization. Um, and similarly, those who have been promoting IT in construction and, and BIM have been colliding with other things and, and there is this um, argument a bit old that, that the process has to be changed so that BIM can be, can be used. Um, but again there is kind of the challenge of carefully conceptualizing what is there outside the information management, uh, mm -hmm. where, which are the interfaces and, and so on. So it's quite possible that the status of professions and social processes uh, are changed for other reasons than information technology. And actually in, in California this IPD, target value design and, and, and so on, which are interfacing with BIM, they have their motivation outside information technology. BIM just is has a very good fit with with, with, with them. So uh, this has been discussed for for some time, and, and we, we need to to to, to mm -hmm. them. Uh, or, or move forward in, in with, yes. with this. So some kind of multidisciplinary approach, uh, recognizing kind of all the sources of motivation. It is not only BIM, it's not only yes. lean. And of course we have sustainability as a third big motivation, which incidentally is pushing pretty much into the same direction as lean and, and BIM. And that we should be using the synergy of, of all those uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good point. So, <laughs> isn't it also so that uh, there are many people who are very eager to use these new technologies nowadays? Because of course the general picture is that, that many people are against changes, but at least in our project there are really many really eager if they get chances of testing those and uh, trying to find good solutions. And I think it's also a cultural change that people have realized that technology is here to stay, that you need to adapt to that. So it's, so nowadays you are not so yes, much against, yes, but because you, you realize that you need to adapt to that situation yeah. more and more. But uh, yeah, as, as a counterweight to this competence trap, so there is also kind of the uh, frustration things. So. And especially in the U.S. with those lit 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 litigations and, uh, and so on, people get so frustrated and they want to use something else. And I, I, I think this has been the motivation behind IPD, for, for example. Uh, uh, if I comment that is uh, one, one of the things is that that is definitely so that that nowadays there are quite a lot of people who really. Uh, feel that they have to use these technologies. 
but it's also, it can also be a problem. When I was speaking with the people uh, in Penn State who made the, the BIM execution uh, guidelines in, for United States, very widely used documentation, very good documentation, they said that it's a situation in US is nowadays quite often that companies are first buying a software, and then they start thinking about what they can do with the software, which is of course the <laughs> totally wrong approach that you should first think that what is the problem that you try to solve, and then you, ha then you buy the tool to solve the problem. Not because it's, it's, it's a little bit like kind of that you have a small garden and you go in and buy a caterpillar, and then you start thinking that do I need that. And, and this is something that the people are often ca get carried away by the technology instead of really thinking about what is the, the, what is the, the motivation for the change. Uh, I think that this is again, it, it's something that is inevitable. That because, uh, for example, here in the UK at the moment, you can see that very clearly. When government stated that they will start demanding BIM by 2016, it was changing the landscape totally because everybody started to think that this is something important, I have to, to adopt that. But people really didn't have much understanding about what it means. But the, the easy part is to think that, okay, I can buy a software which is solving the problems. And, and that's, uh, I, again, uh, I like this kind of comparisons to, to other fields, and, and this is exactly the same way what is selling the, the wonder diets. People think that they can buy kind of uh, the, the change of their lifestyle and, and get kind of, um, a better health and, and buy, by buying a product. It's difficult for people to, to uh, admit that I have to change the way that I'm doing things. That's the solution. It's, uh, the best uh, corporation I've heard about the, the BIM is, is that somebody said that buying BIM software is like buying the membership card in a fitness club. Having the card doesn't make you fit. You have to start working. And that's exactly the same with the, the technology in, in the construction industry. I think that was also what we tried to say with that uh, article on message about BIM utopia that it's of course kind of a it's a kind of a easy way to try to sell it the yes. technology. You work your and I also well, one of one of the, the slides that I have been using actually in my presentation is from Gulash, the this story of Hof Krulo about this, uh, I, I think that Gulbas, you have been very quiet, so you could actually tell that, that, that story, because I think that it's, it's describing the situation at the moment in the construction industry very well. Uh, you want me to describe the fable? Okay, uh, uh, it was saying that the three friends decided to make a business together, but they simply couldn't do anything only because they didn't talk to each other. So it's a very short fable, and it was a nice picture. <laughs> But I prefer to listen today. Um, that's it. So, uh, I finished. <laughs> no, okay. yeah, it, but it, it was really about this the kind of having the, the it was uh, pike and crawfish and, and a swan in front of the wagon. And, oh, nice. and nothing happened because they were pulling the wagon in a different direction. Crayfish wanted to go backwards, the bike wanted to go to the water, and the swan wanted to fly. And, and that's what happens in, in the construction process when, when you start using BIM easily, that people have different motivations, people have different goals. And if you cannot align those goals, the wagon doesn't move anywhere. I think it's it's very good comparison to, to what's what's happening in our industry at the moment. That aligning the goals mm -hmm. somehow, like mm -hmm. I, I think that that's the, the power of the IPD process mm -hmm. is that that you are aligning the goals of the team, and then of course things start to happen because people are pulling to the same direction. Yes, of course. I think it's the magic word is aligning because of course they're they're are still different purposes and goals in, in this kind of multidisciplinary working teams. So, 
aligning them is a, is a good word. Mm -hmm. And, and that is one of the problems, that the old uh, contractual models don't support that. Yes. You don't get any benefits when you are creating more and better information for others. Mm. So people yeah, try, exactly. traditionally people have been trying to minimize their own work rather than optimizing the results for the, the whole project. Yeah, exactly. This is what we have seen many times in our, during our fieldwork projects. This is what happens, and uh, I think one one uh, thing that we were able to create this not working approach approach was that uh, this group of people who who was de developing it, it they somehow uh, were able to cross that boundary, and and uh, they were uh, the the project provided them uh, a space in which they could sort of. Uh, uh, that, that enabled the crossing of the boundary of these con contractual arrangements that normally guide their, their uh, work. To what extent the IPD type of contracts are being used in Finland? Anybody? I'm just curious. There's one. Come Ah, there was a second, I think there was a second uh, uh, experiment. I don't know how it went after all. Uh, this. Uh, is an it had, uh, you mean THL? Yes. I don't know if it was I, IPD. They tried so, that. Allianz. Allianz. Ah, okay. Yeah. It had some features, but maybe it was not really an IPD. Yes. Okay. Uh, Arthur, shall we move to the next point, which is uh, what can we do for the two following, following years? So, you want to add some thoughts to question one or question two? I, I don't have any, any direct questions on, on that because it's, it's uh, to be honest, I don't have good enough understanding of, of, of the, the process uh, that, that kind of uh, that you, you want to, to implement. So I think that, that it, uh, at, at least my, my feeling is that, that perhaps you will now continue to discuss about that kind of a project, how to proceed, and then. Uh, let me know that that what kind of a role and what kind of things you you okay. think that that I, I should be doing and, and of course then I can, I can comment about those and so it's I'm, I'm relatively open to the, the this is very interesting because it's uh, the only only time that I've, I've really seen this kind of a serious comparison of the, the uh, implementation of techno BIM technologies in different countries was John Taylor's PhD work in, in mm -hmm. early 2000. So after that I haven't seen that, that this, would, this kind of an approach would have been implemented. So I think that the results will be very interesting in, in looking at, at really and of, um, trying to understand the reasons while are behind the, the differences in different countries and also to I suppose that one of the outcomes should be that, okay, how to overcome those? What are the, the right strategies in different environments to, to get things moving? Can I make a question? It's to Arto Lauri and maybe also Sami, who I know, Sami Kaido uh, tried to make sense about the development uh, of the BIM in Finland by looking at the documents, all the old projects and going through so my question is that, is there any uh, good account or, uh, about this BIM development in, uh, published in Finnish or in any language, or would it be useful to have such an account? Uh, I mean, uh, what you told Arto and you said that maybe six, seven uh, other uh, 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 
key person should be interviewed to reconstruct mm -hmm. such an analysis? Would it be useful even, do we have about the development of Finland a kind of picture? You of course have, but uh, mm -hmm. is it kind of shared? <laughs> but I said that that's only, only my personal view. I don't think that there is such thing. We, we, uh, there, there has been some uh, research on the, of the development of the IFCs, the uh, in, uh, Industry Foundation mm. classes, the standard for the, the exchange of the BIM information. So Buchrister Björk did something earlier, and, and one of his PhD students and I, we, we made one, one paper about that. But it's, it's looking at the standard development, okay. it's not looking at the, the BIM implementation. So I'm, I'm not aware that, that there would be any, anything like that. So it would be really interesting to, to have that kind of an, a little bit wider, more objective view about that, that and, and get that documented as well, because I think that it's, it would be worthwhile. Okay. Um, so, Buchrister had a paper, pretty recent, in, in, in the last five years, that was it on, on the kind of history of IT infrastructure in, in, in Finland, so that should be checked. Yeah. But I, I agree that that kind of a new synthesis would be would be okay, and I would like to to remind of, of the Gratas project, which was early project towards integrated communication in, in construction. It failed, it was too early, but anyway, it planted the idea of, of, uh, of which then, then has supported an idea of, 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 of need for uh, computer-based communication in infrastructure, which, which has helped later, I think. So I think that we've uh, rigid that this account should be done. Well, well, uh, I think it, <laughs> for it you, would for be us. useful. Uh, yes. uh, but uh, but uh, some you went to. In a way, we have to pay you. You are asking on also on from yourself in a way because we plan to have at least some kind of a because uh, okay. overall uh, bits of this development and we have a bit. Uh, okay interviewed some persons but it's kind of a and you go through the different process. different uh, documents and project reports about mm -hmm. ratas and mm -hmm. these but, uh, but well it, it was because we come as a news <laughs> yes. to the field to have yes. an image we uh, want ourselves to understand the history but it uh, kind of turned out that it was not very easy to reconstruct without interviews because yes. mm -hmm. the documents uh, themselves does not tell so much. But I guess that if such an account would be constructed, of course, the kind of history in the forms of documents, there should be a kind of uh, framework uh, uh, in relation to which interview. What about this phase and this project? And because my impression was the same that about the standardization and people being involved uh, in that, it's much more documented. Okay. I don't it's by coincidence that they have yeah, it, it has been documented more. I don't know why. Okay. Because our intention is to conduct interviews at different levels of analysis in the construction business ecosystem during the file session. So if we if you are also interested we can combine interviews and results of interviews. Yeah, actually one name comes into my mind, name Matti Hannos. He has been yeah. in, 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 in the business from early on and created, was it in, for steel construction, some, some protocols, maybe starting in the 80s. You know, standardization, when you do it, it must be documented. <laughs> it's the nature of the business. <laughs> so it's a natural thing that you have to. Uh, but other not aspects. The his, not the history. Right? Yeah, not the history. Yeah. 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 Okay. So after we will continue maybe at the quarter and uh, leave you free. Okay.
Thank you. And uh, <laughs> of course, we can communicate by, by email as well. And, and uh, hopefully next time when we will have a meeting, I uh, will be also able to be around the table okay. with you. Maybe a last question. Are you comfortable with the uh, G plus community? So, so, so we continue to use that. And we add more people maybe yeah. on, on the uh, community yeah. to share documents and okay. ideas. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Gunas is still there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> so Gunas, we are videotaping also. Thank you very much. Meeting. Then your yeah. work will appreciate. Yeah. And we try to get the video with uh, Albert to Canada. Okay. Yes. If we can manage it technology. Um, we can manage the technology. Yes. Without the end. We will do it. <laughs> we will do it. So maybe we can do a short pause or you want to continue? Yeah, on? yeah, maybe. Well, would that be okay to you, Gulnas, to have a short pause? Yes, of course, why not? Yeah. So you can have a glass of water or... <laughs> I'll have my glass of water too. <laughs> <laughs> or coffee. What time is it now? Uh, four o'clock. Uh, four o'clock, no. <laughs> <laughs> In the morning. Uh, this is yeah. motivation, really, with what we see. <laughs> so you, you will get an A+. <laughs> <laughs> That's on tape now. <laughs> That's on tape. <laughs> okay. okay, maybe if I can get some coffee. I'll make a few hands. And if you need the bathrooms, there are some of the coffee. Have you been in Finland this summer? Wow. I have been, yeah. Yeah. Second of July. Okay, right time, because the July yes. was kind of rare. Yeah. Just my accommodation in other name is a bit too yeah. near my office, so there has been a temptation. Okay, so I'm staying there now. Okay, no problem. Yes. And you'll survive. Yes. Thank you very much. So are there any new interesting projects you are? really start really. <laughs> <laughs> you may have an idea for years and, and then, uh, then, then succeed in, 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 in funding to it. Not, not much regarding funding but but I have kind of research streams which are kind of unfunded and, and but more interesting than any funded so I'm, I'm doing research abduction. Okay, you are still on production? Oh, yeah, 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 and, and, and then this analysis and synthesis from a, as a, as a from Aristotle as a logical point of view, yeah, as a, as a basic theory of design and, and mm -hmm. also rhetoric mm -hmm. as a basic theory of design. So, so. You know, some is this taste of work? No, it's you part of the Have you written on the abduction? Oh, there's one conference paper. Okay, that would be really good. Uh, which you, you have to ask from, from me. I, I don't think it's, it's possible. But I okay. That's my long term. I don't know how to go. There's some misinformation. Dream. Dream. Huh? <laughs> no, no, he's written several papers. About the too dissertation too was too about that. Papers, that yeah. 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 Okay, so, but it's. it's Pearson. So, Pearson. It, it is so kind of characteristics to abduction research. So it is very fragmented, and, and people just don't have any, any good overview. So, so we did not come, come across. And, and we know now about uh, Belgian powers when we write about abduction, not knowing that that there has been much literature on abduction in design. So starting from first. 
and neglecting all the the, the later literature. So so. Oh. I read the book by Mu. He's an He's teaching philosophy of architecture, mm. and the book is about comparison between Frankfurt, Ostend, and Curitiba in terms of uh, sustainability introduction in the management of the cities. And he takes a logical point of view and uses uh, induction, deduction, abduction, and the conclusion is only. Abduction succeed in the area. Is there a book there, Sammy? But then, more, more understanding is dangerous because, of course, abduction has been defined that it is what is not deduction, what is not induction, but not actually. We don't know what is induction. Jeff so Kanine has been interested in this connection to analysis and synthesis. So, recently, uh, he, he has some papers because he was just wondering why first was not referring this old method of analysis and synthesis by talking on abduction because first was so really well known on all methodologies throughout the history. So. For some reasons, it was not Yeah, I, I have heard Nina had a series of lectures on abduction, but. Se on ollut siinä, että kun on niin katu, kun on oksi, niin on ollut. I have some papers, not some, uh, that was one theme that it would be really interesting to see so, some methodologies in activity theory. And, because there are some similarities, but I haven't seen any, and I have not done it any systematic way. Because I think that there is a lot of uh, what could be compared to the one. But it's not, it's not uh, the, the basics is from the philosophy of science. So. Okay, so you will join this group after your dissertation. Yes, exactly. Yes. There are also two other dissertations from the philosophy of science if you are interested. Some is missing, but there is one from Eriko Mattila and Tarja Knuttila. Both are tools. It was very interesting because they, they were studying models in, in, in linguistics and in the, in, in the uh, 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 other case, Erika Matti was studying the modeling of infections, uh, diseases, mm -hmm. and he made a kind of, and we were, uh, Matti Sintonen from the uh, Department of Philosophy was the other supervisor who knew very well the philosophy of modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but what was the novelty that uh, they really went to see the modeling work mm -hmm. and in that way contribute to a new way to the philosophy who speculate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, actually there was Mary Morgan, he's from, uh, I think she's from London School of Economics, a philosopher who kind of raised the problem that to understand modeling we should look at how modeling is done and how the models are used, which call for an empirical approach. Mm -hmm. To understand what? What models are, because it was uh, the traditional discussions very much the relations between empirical observation and theory and, and mm -hmm. the relations so between model to the theory, but in very conceptual level. And Mary Morgan 
especially after the uh, computer support mo models and uh, mm -hmm. computer mm -hmm. models, it changed the situation that he kind of co uh, opened a, a research program that to understand what is it is today, we should look at how they are constructed and used yeah. in different systems. So, yeah, actually, there's a new and, 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 and Aldo, which is related to that, so so we boldly, boldly try to redefine engineering or, or engineering design based on, on, on the method of, of science and starting from the models of Plato and uh, Aristotle. And uh, models come in because in engineering, so people are using models from natural science, but then they need to be, there needs to be calculations, and, 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 and there are, so there are calculation models which can solve towards predictions and, and, yeah. and so on, and, and, and they are just approximations of, of those natural yeah. models. And so the, whole, the whole simulations kind of, you know, uh, yeah. the software and uh, are decisive new tools which yeah. allows yeah. calculation that couldn't but you need the theoretical understanding of the mm -hmm. interdependencies of the system to be modeled or simulated to, to be able to do it and Erika's work was very interesting because it were statisticians, mathematics, ma mathematicians, uh, uh, epidemiologists and computer engineers who collaborated when they mm -hmm. made this mm -hmm models of how the infectious disease are uh, spreading in the population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the understanding of the mechanism came from the epidemiologists, mm -hmm. but then uh, the uh, statisticians kind of traced that what kind of mathematical function would pr uh, be good to mm -hmm. make sense of it. And the computer science made it into a software, and so it was kind of interdisciplinary dialogue. A uh, question for Laura yeah. is uh, abduction close to pattern recognition or something like that? Um, so there, there's a paper by the German philosopher Schwartz which provides a taxonomy of, of different abductions from philosophy of science view and at, at, at one extreme of, of his taxonomy there is the insight that, that actually abduction is very much the phenomenon of we recognizing some, something so in, in, in that sense yeah maybe yeah. Yeah. and at the other extreme the other extreme is just uh, the kind of very mundane task of when we know a mechanism, so and we want to realize a goal, so we, we just from our memory pinpoint the mechanism. And, and so if we want to cut paper, so we take scissors and, and, and so on. There's no creativity in that. Okay. So. But, uh, so, coming back to this Plato and Aristotle business, so, actually it has been quite, uh, quite good to look at the history of philosophy of science and, and to see that there have been, those two traditions have been continuously present, and they are still present, even if now the understanding is that there is one method of science in natural, natural science, but, but actually there, there isn't both kind of traditions are very much living and one can find kind of contemporary uh, scholars who are either Platonists or, or Aristotelians. And, and now how is it related to engineering? So actually it was there from economics but also from, from uh, quantitative models that Platonist ideas have had food for engineering and of course the means that verification and validation is not given much weight. 
leading to, to problems. So we, we, we try to, to trace back current problems to, to kind of choices in, in, in the philosophy of science. So you're busy. Oh, oh yes, but, but there are other, other people. There we have an Italian uh, physicist who he claims in, in, in the whole uh, what is Loki or college from, from 16 to 18 years. So in Italy he said that they mostly read philosophy there, which to me is quite, quite surprising. But he, he knows these things very well. You have your copy, I think. <laughs> so, because Arthur was not comfortable to do all the project review, so we start with the round table. But maybe we can just look at our plan of work if you want to understand what we are doing during. The following, the following years, because the goal is to present our result in May in Montreal. Uh, with Daniel, we are thinking to organize a kind of a conference on BIM in Finland and BIM in India. So, during the summertime, your intention was to do literature review, use of a platform for remote work, exchange of articles, information, and uh, have a kickoff me meeting in Helsinki, what we are doing. And then during the fall session, we want to conduct 12 interviews in Finland. And maybe we can adjust each other if you want to complete an account of an, an historical account of the emergence of BIM in Finland. Uh, maybe uh, Gulnas can contribute to those interviews. Then uh, written synthesis, coding analysis, and uh, a short confirmation phase year two with a survey and observation of uh, several cases and if we have time focus groups with professional so that's the plan but i understand that there is here an interest for an historical account of BIM in finland and an interest of using uh, activity theory but in Quebec in, in Finland to understand the new challenges for the organization in the industry. Can you open a bit this period and activity E and, and the number 
Ah, et, et le French, euh, est euh, été pour ce mot. Ah, is uh, fall, F, uh, H is winter, and then uh, E, summer, E, fall, H, winter. And we should end in summer 16. Are there activities for the army? Three activities. Uh, 14, 15, and 16. Until uh, May 16. Oh, it is year. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, year 16. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I thought that it's actually code. Okay. I think the names are coming from you, Gunas, from Arto. Yeah, yeah, I found myself and then I sent the list to Arto, so he has his contact and he has added some people and he said who is the best contact in okay. each company. So the main contribution Arto did, yes. But for now, I think the biggest challenge is to find people for the fourth space of individual work because right now I'm not sure what, who we should interview there. So the The idea in the space of individual work was to interview people who are heavy users, like uh, engineers or architects, who are fully converted to, to BIM and using BIM the, during the whole day, to have a sense of what are the challenges, the competencies they need. Just wondering, wondering concerning this number four is that some uh, coordinating or some people in a coordinating role in, in companies could be the right ones yeah. to so, name yeah. these people. So what mm -hmm. do you think, Tavia? I, you mean uh, any people in a company? In, a, in the companies could name them for? Yes, yes, I was thinking. Yeah, maybe. For instance, if I think like from Crownwood, if you ask mm -hmm. uh, like Tero or, or Tuomas, if they could name somebody that could be interviewed. Yeah. Of course, there is this language issue. Which language are yes. you going to use when you are doing the interviews? <laughs> I don't know if I, we I can do French speaking. We, we, we can do it in <laughs> English and you can do in, in Finnish. Oh, I think there are Finnish people speak English. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I think but I don't yes. think that there are there are not so many people who speak French. Well, no, French we don't mm. expect to, okay. to meet people. But uh, is it an uh, idea that the Gulas come uh, here to Finland to make the interviews? Is it? Uh, did I understand? Uh, 
Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Is it idea that you come here to make yes. the interviews? Yes, as far as I understood. Yeah. Mm. Yes. What the, uh, uh, my kind of question is that if you have 12 persons to be interviewed and you have these four spaces, I'm a little bit uh, kind of hesitant that how covered, I, for instance, the space of individual work. Mm. How many professionals you are able to interview? Uh, okay. If they are included in the 12 and you already have in the other space no. very many, yeah. I think it's not that sufficiently rich data to, uh, uh, to make an announcer uh, mm. write a paper. And what is the profession of those people? Are yeah, designers? which ones are? Mm. are yeah. kind of, only they can be designers and project managers. Mm. Yeah. But still, you see, there's a problem. Yes. Yes. They okay. remain quite a few to be done, and we also we have a then there are their uh, opinions or uh, uh, account of how they use it. But if they are for uh, from which professions mm -hmm. and how representative they are uh, in relation to no any, problem. yeah, yeah. So I, I understand these, uh, uh, these other spaces. I could imagine, for instance, that there are interviews like here, uh, uh, where you can ask all, both of the institutional development mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, the situation in the firm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be the combination. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit kind okay. of hesitant whether... We can fit it. Uh, yeah, because uh, yes. I think it's unrealistic. It's, yes, if if yes. there are about 12 yeah, interviews, it may be, may be, uh, yes. be kind of uh, focused on the mm -hmm. emergence and development okay. and the present stage through uh, the key firm representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the kind of historical, meaning history, 10, 15, 20 years ago, so that development is not very well represented here. I, I think this uh, Matti Hanus should be added. Mm -hmm. he has been year, yeah. There from the beginning, and also he has been setting mm -hmm. up uh, tens time. of EU projects, and I, I, I think funding mm -hmm. for IT developments have been. So other problem related to that, if uh, a kind of historical view about the emergency development is selected, it's a problem that the documentation is in the Finnish language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the documentary basis for the interviews is necessary to have a kind of, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that, that constitutes a problem. That also, I add both Mr. Beer, who has studied in, in France, so he can speak yeah. French. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Should there be somebody from Argentina besides here? Or Salomon or somebody? He has been from the very beginning. He has yeah. was first in the VTT. I think there's no, nobody from the but, side. But, but uh, I. I am a, an engineer. I have never done quantita qualitative research. I don't trust asking people. <laughs> so that's why the documents yeah. are yeah, so important. Yeah, documents, and, and then there's this kind of prior theories and, 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 and so on. So, so I'm, I'm a bit concerned that uh, there, there should be input from from literature and, and, and theories and, and so on, what, what we, which we discussed. And then there should be documentary analysis. And, and now there's uh, no tasks, if I understand right, which are focusing on these aspects. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, in practice, it uh, it's, it's still a kind of open that I would, if it's a kind of when we do qualitative research through interviews, normally you speak about thematic interview, that you select the themes that are, are asked in a fairly similar way to the interviewees. Uh, then uh, it's very important how you derive the themes. And mm -hmm. if, if it's done in Finland and Quebec, they should be comparable mm -hmm. to make 
uh, to make the comparison possible. Mm -hmm. So if there are things like uh, the history of research and development related to the BIM or technology policy funding, industry association, mm -hmm. cultural traditions, markets, regulatory environment and so on, mm -hmm. they should be similar. Yes, business model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also if you are reconstructed in past uh, mm -hmm. through interviews, I think you need documents because mm -hmm. I've done this memory uh, interview in myself. So so you need documents somehow because people don't remember when things happened. So mm -hmm. they rely their documents and then they start telling you things. But that's why before the interviews you should have been read the documents yeah, to course. have a uh, cut off trunk. Okay. Uh -huh. And this this were the project, this yes, were the yes. key events. Yeah, and then you can interview good. what happened there and yeah. what yeah. this yeah. what is the significance of this event. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask, I have also done a kind of historical study about the history of biotech in, in BTT. Mm -hmm. If you ask people uh, to remember uh, 10, 15 years ago, they simply can't do it. Mm -hmm. They get totally, me. Uh, what was it? But if you have to provide a kind of skeleton, this is, was the development, and now let's talk about this. It's immediately connected to some concrete historical event, and they can recall it. In psychology, we speak a kind of helped uh, recollection of things. People use, for instance, photos. There's been kind of comparison that if you directly ask people to recollect, it's kind of very poor. But if you give uh, uh, photos and, and artifacts that help them to reconnect to the past events, it's much more rich. Yeah. And now, now uh, maybe there's problem from the fin fin point of view of the Finnish case that the documentation is in the Finnish language. Mm -hmm. Some of it is in English. Yeah. Some of those yeah. projects are having mm -hmm. these summaries in mm -hmm. English. So you have to send us two or three uh, reports written in English mm -hmm. from decades. Yeah, so what, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think... Sometimes people also have their own documents they want to bring to these interviews mm -hmm. that help them memorize. Yeah, depending who they are, yeah. because now we have a list of persons, but when you have the kind of historical skeleton about what happened, of course the people are related to that history in a very different way. They have their record, I participate to this, mm -hmm. and, and oh, so yes, it, it yes. would be all. Once I had a woman who came with a suitcase to an interview, <laughs> uh, I was interviewing about the history of one developmental project that took place 15 years ago. And, and the first thing what she did was she had a long table and, and she arranged the documents in, in, in the, you know, the order related to time. And then she started talking. And then when I was interviewing her, we were moving along the table. <laughs> it yeah. was like time. He line. used the means yeah. to recall it. Yeah. 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 No. How you see Ray? I'm afraid I have to leave. Okay, okay. Nice to so meet you. Thank you. Very interesting. Very much for your presence. See you. Yeah. Bye. We could do something because we have this idea of trying to trace this development and then we have some preliminary ideas. So at least, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, was, I don't I, know how because we don't have any resources, so it would be just yeah. Well, I, I, I just could. The, yeah, I, I agree that, and I was thinking that it would be, of course, you. Worry. Uh, it might be because you well con constructing together a kind of historical skeleton mm -hmm. because it's all, all uh, I, uh, it would be very nice to have a rich account about the emergence and development of institutional yes. establishment. Uh, yeah, so it's in our but the fact is that we have now uh, funding from the Finnish Academy for 11 months and uh, mm -hmm. our task we are uh, Kind of writing papers, uh, 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 which should be published, uh, which make visible what we have done and uh, mm -hmm. analyzed it. Uh, so um, uh, we don't kind of have resources uh, uh, for that. But uh, 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 Sami is uh, uh, salaried by the university. And, it's not in that position, <laughs> but it, that, that's why. Yeah, but I'm kind of saying that uh, you are the only option in this mm. to do it. 
it is it, up to you. Definitely we can do at least uh, collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yes. what it then means. Yes. We can design together a timeline with different teams yeah. and see where and, yeah, events and, are emerging, yeah. both in Quebec yeah. and in yeah. Canada. And the other thing uh, which might be done collaboratively is uh, the kind of making some kind of frame and selection of the themes mm -hmm. so that the uh, uh, account can, becomes compa comparable yes, with yes, two yes. countries. And from there we design the interviews with the same themes. In yeah, yeah, teams. yeah. Of course there's a problem that when we uh, do the themes and then if you have 12 interviewees uh, uh, they have uh, they are in the different position in the process and they have mo uh, more to tell to some theme and uh, uh, so, uh, not so much about others but still I think it's very important to have the same themes to construct a comparable yes. account or, or history mm -hmm. about uh, that. So. Yes, it, it is much more problematic to have the same to interview, interview people from the, you know, this individual work thing, yeah. because you really, it's difficult to have a sort of a group of people that is representing the field. You know. But we can cut it and seal, yeah. make it yeah. later in the, with another project. But I, I, but I think that it would be possible to combine in the sense that there are, in, uh, among the interviewees, people who know uh, something about the uh, institutional history and is being involved in, and at the same time can tell about the implementation of BIM in her mm -hmm. own firm. Mm -hmm. And these people would be, in, and it would be important to have uh, sufficiently them among the twelve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Half of them should be persons who can tell about both mm -hmm. aspects to contribute to the reconstruction of the history from the point of view of industry but on the other hand tell something about what happens in... Actually, we could make a, make a matrix where you look at there must be in the interviews also uh, sufficiently persons from the Finnish firms, mm -hmm. which on the other hand have something to tell about the common history. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then I think either if we want to have this number four here on your list, we should really have a funding together, mm -hmm. perhaps with also with uh, uh, your group. Yeah, yeah. we shall as well. And I think, uh, I don't know if, if Gomas, it's not impossible, I don't know what you think about uh, it, Sami, that you would also kind of participate even to the interviews because they are very interesting and in, in the in, in that sense, help in bringing the context mm -hmm. and understanding of the yeah. things perspective. I wouldn't, even I would be interested to be if you come home on this interview to listen what he, what he tells about that. And it also uh, made possible that if we know the data, it's much more easy to discuss about it. Or, but we don't have special resources, it's what we have to discuss. Yeah, we have to really do a lot of writing this year, mm -hmm. because we have huge amounts of data from uh, from this pre program. No, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. just the videotape data from, okay. uh, from the lifeline pro life cycle projects, five life, life cycle projects, and then various uh, <laughs> observations on the in the field, in mm -hmm. construction sites, and then we have data from uh, three not working experiments. Here you have very rich data of yeah. the user involvement, and mm -hmm. we necessarily have to analyze and write mm -hmm. them out in decent form. Mm -hmm. Also, so that's, that's the kind of need to get. Yeah. I yeah. have still that data on my list. The yeah. management. Yeah. 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 By the way, I was just thinking when you were saying names. Soon we have Ray Johanninen from Kranbund. He's on pension now, but yeah. but he is. I think he has lived through that development. Yes. Yeah. And I think Arto should be interviewed in the case of Finland. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, for instance, uh, it's totally futile to interview me. Who has never been 
in, through only through this project that kind of knew it. <laughs> I really don't uh, have any uh, uh, would uh, definitely be one of the interviews. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. At least in the event of number one. Yeah, I think it's it's better to take some outsiders. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about of people we can yeah. you can interview? Yeah. Yeah. How you about the other film that is missing from there? Is there someone? There yeah, was be, someone but, I know, but could be, but I don't know. I don't think we need to pick up those people, you know, among our friends. <laughs> more people in Finland who know something about the history and mm -hmm. but, uh, some modeling than our instead of interview our, I would uh, be ready to come or be involved in the reconstruction of the themes mm -hmm. and the kind of skeleton or some skeleton which is needed to make this comparable because we uh, as I said I think our approach we need understanding of Yes, I know. I, to, I think uh, you fine. also appreciate yeah. that. Uh, so far, that I understand the situation in Finland. I think that the, the space, that this space number three, innovation and project. Uh, I think it would be better if you had also other companies than Skanska. Of course, mm -hmm. because you would get kind of ideal view. And there are so many different. Uh, uh, approaches, how they implement their DMA, using DMA mm -hmm. in the companies, different mm -hmm. from the okay. yeah. And ILCA would be even better as a person uh, to be interviewed of uh, history and pro it, pro IT program. Who's supposed to be there? Yeah. Or the oh, oh, yes, yes. And he, was, so yeah. he could be one of those who knows history. And Both. And, and they can tell about Karska. Yeah. But I'm kind of, my point is, it would be very good to have three or four others, people who. Yeah, yeah but other companies. Yeah. Also, design offices. Yeah, yeah. 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 other yes. companies, because you know, Skarska has these some success cases that are already, already recorded. Or at least they are going well, to talk about them. I mean, they talk about to present them, them as a Yeah, yeah but it's as we told it, it's always probably the success stories are a little bit dangerous. Yeah. There is this bridge story and the uh, Russell Bridge. Yeah. I think it's in the Eastman Stand book or mm -hmm. then it's in Grimmel's book. But other companies, what do you have in mind, Tavia? What would be the useful other companies? Other companies, you mean construction companies? In, in, that mm. would be interviewed. Uh, and CSE, UIT, Lemigainen, Asabe, any of them. Yeah, but then we should uh, find their people. Okay. Uh, you know, Lauren knows the people. Yeah. I know the people. Yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah. I mean, if yeah, yeah. there's yeah. 12, it's a kind of selection. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. YIT is not very really active on the back front. Of all yeah, there mean, was Jan Laikinen doing previous work, which was stopped, or how should we mm, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Of course, he knows also. But NCC? Yeah. Okay. Let me get in. Let me get in, especially a uh, mm. bit smaller company. Who would be there? Anikki Mäkinen could uh, at least pinpoint. Who? Mm -hmm. Anikki Karpinen. Oh, Karpinen. Okay. Yeah. Anikki Karpinen. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good. At least oh, she no. won't give you any oh. idealistic stories. And say, say, who is there? Mm. I think we, we need to think about that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. later about that. Yeah. 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 Names, I mean. But what was your I what is more like a big picture of BIM use or more like about the sport that because BIM the idea is that it's used everywhere, so do you want to have the view, viewpoint of structural engineers or HVAC engineers or mm -hmm. or engineering or is it just kind of picture? Uh, I don't know if, if, if we have enough 
resources in the project to interview uh, at level four. But mm -hmm. the idea is uh, to check in Quebec and in Finland the notion of uh, IT and professional identity. Uh, why are maybe people in Finland more acquainted to IT, more uh, emerged to uh, information technology so in, in BIM than in Quebec, for example? Is the architect or the engineer in Quebec more traditional than in, in Finland? Mm. Not techno crazy like uh, you, you said. Uh, yes, and uh, I have had a, a, an issue in mind now for, for, for some, some minutes. For some years, maybe 50 years ago, I saw an article comparing the innovation propensity of different U.S. states. And it was empirical, so it studied how different innovations had been taken on board in different states. And it found that there's kind of a pipeline, more or less. Everything new starts in California, not new, but, but just almost. And, and then the last is North Dakota. So, and that if this kind of continues, so of course, then each state has kind of system wide features, it just explain. And here, the possibility is that, that it is the, the same. That, so uh, Finland might be pretty high, at least on the European innovation ranking mm -hmm. list. I don't know about Quebec, but, but uh, kind of the explanation could be at the system level. And, 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 Quebec and is quite than. innovative in. Uh, for example, in bio, biotechnology, but yeah. not in not in BIM. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you able to uh, interview some heavy users or some critical users? Or uh, I don't know if we should go to level four, mm -hmm. but if we go to level four, uh, heavy user with um, who experiment may be uh, transformation of their um, professional identity before IT and after IT, what they have become, how, how they have integrated those things. Like in the healthcare system, there are uh, people who are heavy users of IT and others they, they don't want to use. Uh, any application. It's, it's a kind of uh, problem might be here if you have an individual's point of view, professional identity. That seems uh, uh, information modeling is very uh, strongly a tool of collaboration which mm -hmm. influences the ways of divisional labor and doing things. If, if you have strictly the kind of professional identity excludes uh, the focus on, on no, new, new collaborative mm -hmm. forms of that, mm -hmm. new ways of organizing things. Mm -hmm. It could be, of course, added that you you have double that how the collaboration and division labor is being changed and how does it influence your professional identity. Yes, and I think that if we take that question, we, we have to go to the level of experiences mm -hmm. because the person tells about how, yeah. how he or she experiences it. Mm -hmm. it usually, it, it's from experience, mm -hmm. and then it's, then it's kind of a... Maybe we should uh, start drafting or making explicit these themes, mm -hmm. because yes. it affects some of these to interview and yes. select people. My uh, understanding is that there should be a kind of a 
Skelet sub-project. Uh, the goal is to establish the timeline and the key teams. And from there, we can maybe review our framework and design the interviews and see what documents we should know before to go to the, to the field. But we, I think, even in English, we have uh, different reports that enable us, I think, to, to have a, a timeline uh, at least. But from there, we, we should focus on the teams yeah. that are changing. Uh, because uh, our interest was on that uh, historical development, and mm -hmm. then there are these people who have been involved in this yes, process. Yes. So it's a bit different if you are looking what is happening now. Or no. How to what teams are important if we are looking at the current situation. But yeah, but I, uh, my comment exactly was that, the, uh, Karo, it's not an excellent possible uh, option, but still to have representatives of firms who have experiences about that history and at the same time could answer to the question that related is development or implementation in the firm and its mm -hmm. And uh, if we make an historical account, we will cross the literature and management. Uh, in the 80s, the focus is on the, the firm, the single firm, and now the focus is on the business ecosystem. So there's more and more interaction relationships between all the actors in one business ecosystem to make um, Coordinated networks emerge that uh, didn't exist exist 20 years ago. So uh, it could be interesting to be able to, to show that. Uh, Art took up this John Taylor's dissertation on the comparison mm -hmm. of Finland. Do you know it? I know. I exchange. Uh, I, I, think it, uh, I have uh, some references to that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it would be, uh, I, I think, wise to uh, study it and how but, uh, it approach he, the comparison. He said to me, I didn't want to compare US and Finland, but in the process of my thesis, I realized that I had more data on the US and more data on Finland, so I compared the, yeah, yeah. the two countries yeah. where I had the, the most. But I was just the, thinking the, that the in constructing the, the teams yes. and the framework, it would yes. be nice to yes. look yeah, at yeah, how we do it from the methodological point. Okay. We have used one of these articles in, in one of our articles about interfaces, he has this definition of different interfaces, and, uh, like technical and, and so on, I don't know. I asked him if he had a questionnaire, it was open interviews, he had, he had no uh, structure. Okay, yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I, I was uh, kind of uh, taking up these themes for it, it, thematic interview, mm -hmm. because if, if you have people who are in a very different positions and you have a very uh, kind of loose uh, interview, it would be then uh, 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 very difficult to compare mm -hmm. and, and, and to reconstruct the yeah. systematic account, yeah. even if it's a little bit um, uh, kind of artificial. It should yeah. be uh, yeah, constructed exactly. on yeah. the base fairly mm -hmm. exact themes. Okay. Uh, on the basis of which you can then write mm -hmm. what were, what are the regulative and uh, contractual, uh, uh, for instance, and then mm -hmm. focus on that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if you are, if, if there is the idea to use some kind of a framework like a business ecosystem, mm -hmm. it would be important to know what is meant by it. Yes. Yeah. What is included in the mm -hmm. business ecosystem mm -hmm. if it's a unit of some kind of I use usually the article by T's in two T's. T's. T E E. T E A C E. Yes, I know. Berkeley. Yes, I know. C -C -R -C -R in um, what year? Strategic Management Journal. David T's. Yeah, David T's. Yeah. 207. 
207. An article Good. of uh, about Is it here? what are the dynamic capabilities, and it starts okay. from the notion of a business ecosystem. Okay, I may even have this article. Yeah, I uh, read this speak about it, but does he elaborate the concept of this ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Good, because uh, if you think that theme, they somehow mm. be parts of the eco yes, or yes. essence of dimensions and or there parts is a of the ecosystem. Very rich framework because he described three dynamic capabilities for firms in business ecosystem, basic capabilities, but dynamic capabilities as uh, sensing, sizing, and uh, transforming. Okay. Well, Jan, uh, I regard this capability concept very abstract, but in this case, the concept of business ecosystem would be framed that what parts. So he explained the, that the firms began to work together to better sensing the environment, yeah. to better sizing, sizing opportunities, mm -hmm. and learn to transform themselves to use new technologies. Mm -hmm. So this is connected with, uh, yeah, but anyway, at some level, with activity theory yeah. too. But it would be interesting to somehow structure or, or yes. to know how what what is meant by business ecosystem yes. in, your, in your study. And he made the comparison with uh, the view, the what we call the Porter view, Michael Porter, mm -hmm. IT, IT5 on uh, what is strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. but on and the other hand, uh, when I was thinking what kind of themes would be, there they would be uh, things that came up in the discussion. Of, of course, we can compare it to the concept of business ecosystem or there are other uh, but uh, like uh, research and development related to being uh, technology policy and funding, uh, uh, the activity of industrial association and their initiative related to being cultural tradition, uh, trust, markets, regulatory environment, and then uh, let's say environmental policy and policy related to. Well, what kind of, so I, I, I think that it's evident what uh, kind of elements could be. Yeah, perhaps the concept of innovation ecosystem could mm -hmm. be explicit too. Uh, if you speak about the innovation ecosystem, uh, who's, uh, uh, where do you take that concept where it has been introduced? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it has been. It has been used much. Yeah, I know. Uh, I used, I, it's uh, used as a <laughs> uh, in the talk, but when you ask that, show me what's the innovation ecosystem, it's difficult to find any accounts. Mm -hmm. Because we have this national innovation system, which I know very well. Mm -hmm. And now the ecosystem is a kind of new term, but uh, I'm okay, kind of doubtful whether there is uh, any, any yeah. kind of theory okay. behind it. It's uh, nice because it's, you know, firm or technology is adapting to the yeah. changing mm -hmm. environment where all the elements should be taken mm -hmm. there. But the difficulty is to uh, kind of make sense what are the sense of dimensions mm -hmm. or such systems. Uh, yes. So. But I think for TS is quite the same a business ecosystem and an innovation ecosystem. Mm -hmm. the innovation ecosystem is a business ecosystem where innovation is key. There are more traditional business ecosystem, and in, if we go to biotechnology, we are really in innovation. Yeah, there was a big study in, in the Alto University where the uh, uh, business systems in the Scandinavian countries were uh, compared, and uh, they used the concept of business system. And, I, I think uh, it was very clear to this, uh, uh, near to this. Oh, that would be one. Uh, by the way, it's, it was school Scandinavian uh, project where the business systems were con compared. It would be uh, interesting to see what kind of dimensions mm -hmm. they took. And there's a comparison between the countries. Actually, I have the book in my shelf because 
for Scotty Nelia in uh, and uh, there were uh, all the Nordic countries very involved and there's comparison of the systems. That would be one. Actually, I could fetch it up to show. It's, I know. And in, in your article you speak about uh, evolutionary economics and this speaks also from this point of view. Business ecosystem is related to the evolutionary economics instead of traditional. The problem might be that how much we can cover with these interviews because there are so many aspects and elements. I, I, I think that at the end we have to reduce the teams and let during the interviews new teams they manage. We should have open questions. That's something you know, that we don't see even before. I made a lot of open interviews, and there is the phenomenon of uh, saturation. If you interview people from the same industry, at the end they say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need only. It depends how they are representative of, of their industry. Mm -hmm. But if you interview key people at strategic level, uh, maybe with uh, 10 or 20 interviews, you have this saturation phenomenon. You don't learn something new. They, they are all saying the, the, the same thing together. But of course, this is kind of a preliminary because maybe you can uh, publish something on this kind of historical development, yes, but yes. still it's quite loose if it's mm -hmm. based on just on interviews or with, also with doc documents. It's, kind of a, it's, better with it's a kind of background uh, for all that. So maybe we should also discuss on this next basis on this timeline. They are now concentrating very much on this. Sorry, I didn't find it all through my thought. It, it came from Oxford University Press last year, and Guy was one of the authors. Sorry about that, perhaps. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just saying that should we concentrate also on this, what else is happening, or what is our timetable? Yeah, still. Or come to court, should we make kind of decisions or think about the immediate steps? The immediate steps will be to add your names in uh, our uh, common platform. We use uh, G plus community. G plus. Uh, G plus. Okay. And uh, another decision will be to open. Uh, a sub-project in, in Gateways will be the skeleton timeline so we can post the, all the documents related to the uh, historical view of maybe in Finland in Quebec to subsystems and try to make your mind oh, what, what is the what, what are the, the key events you in the timeline in Finland and in Quebec and what themes are emerging during that period and from there structure the interview and uh, check for the documentation if, if there are some. There, there are a lot in Finland but I, I don't think that we find a lot of documentation in, in Quebec because I think Daniel is maybe the only with uh, um, professional chair in BIM. I don't know that there is no other actor, I think. So he is an uh, evangelizator. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas on who to interview? Any uh, uh, besides Tanya? Yes, we, we, because uh, we have uh, very big firms like Lavalin 
and uh, I had some interviews for the project with the ITVP. So he knows, uh, he knows that some countries, uh, Arab countries, like to, to see uh, 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 BIM mock-up. So for different contracts, they, they will use uh, some parts of, of BIM. So he knows the concept. But it's not like here in Finland. We can, we can say that the industry reached a consensus in the past around new technology, new practices. They work in different countries with different technologies. And not really in Quebec. But another firm, Pamelo, is a construction firm in Quebec, essentially. And they are developing the, the big tools. Daniel knows that. Mm -hmm. But is it then reasonable to make this kind of historical of, uh, scheme in Quebec if you don't have much uh, material for that? But what do you think? But it, it's, should it's, it's a good it's a it should be done. Yeah, because absolutely. It, it will show the the wide differences between yes, yes, Finland yes. and Quebec. Uh, and and the, the structure of the industry in Finland it, is maybe very well connected in Finland. I, I don't know worldwide how the Finnish firms are performing, uh, working, but we have a very uh, world player in the construction industry, Lavalin, with projects everywhere in the world. So the, this, this is another business ecosystem. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's harder to find those key documents and key persons. But I, I know personally one key or Daniel know yeah. a lot of, of people. Okay. I think it's yeah. essential to have the history yeah. of both yes. and yeah. card code, but even it's shorter, but it's then it's, so, if, yeah. if something is activity then Maybe it's historic. I mean uh, we're being with the, 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 the largest firms in Quebec we, we can maybe trace the origin of, of BIM. Okay. And I won't be surprised that it comes from from a uh, client overseas who yeah. heard about BIM yeah, and yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, exactly interesting that there are big differences yes, yes, the yes, yes, yes. and the uh, factors that influence. Yes, yes. It's kind of give the explanatory understanding of, yes, yes. of the present situation. Because if you make a kind of uh, 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 you just ask uh, or compare the, what level uh, mm -hmm. uh, the use is so being it's a, it's a much deeper understanding when it comes to the mm -hmm. path, the historical path and, and how the institution and environment and the ecosystem is there. So practically, I can create those sub projects, uh, introduce your names on the platform. So it's easy to, to share ideas and uh, documents. At least, at least technically. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <right. laughs> Gulnas is a good example. Why? Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> So on page 13, you have a communication plan. Yes. I was just looking uh, at it that you are going to have all fully done during the one. We are selling oranges. <laughs> <laughs> we are selling oranges at the end. So my ideas, I discussed with uh, Gunas she has a question, what is the communication plan? And in the project, I described year one, year two. So first we communicate internally, physical and virtual meetings, then interviews in Quebec in Finland, and the results for those interviews and the framework from those interviews for me can, should be submitted to 
I saw three opportunities, AOM or uh, AMCIS or ICIS and uh, Gulnaz added uh, the other construction industry um, conferences, I think in Canada, Gulnaz. Uh, at year two, second year, we should enrich our result with uh, the survey and uh, I think write articles and submit articles to journal that can be journal of management or management of construction, R&D management. And at the end of year two, it is uh, planned that we have a conference uh, with the Pomero chair of Daniel in Montreal. And we will invite uh, policy makers and uh, people from the industry. Maybe, uh, I, I hope that maybe 40 people from Quebec and uh, minist different ministry yeah. will be there. And we can yeah. change yeah. about the results. Yeah. And I think I can pay three trips for people from Finland to, to go to, to attend the seminar, to the conference. That's the communication plan. Practically, uh, you know, in our industry, it depends on the initiative of the first author. If somebody wants to write an article, he is the first author, and he asks collaboration to other people. And when a project works well, different people take different initiatives, and it's a multiplication of yeah. initiative. So it can be uh, papers from uh, you, Sami, with your where you got the first author. We just collaborate with data from, from Quebec or all the others, or Lori and so on. Or Anel. <laughs> That's an open market. So the, the near tasks to discuss in the platform mm -hmm. is a kind of time uh, frame yes. with the important project and events and uh, themes, framework, and I think going through, for instance, these and this Nordic business system comparison mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to John Davis' dissertation is sufficient basis for discussing about the elements or dimensions. And then the list of interviewees, mm -hmm. which Caro represent, yes. cover both the yes. history or ecosystem and the present and application. And I copy a thesis from your art university uh, this year on business ecosystem, but I just saw it. I, I copy it, I don't know. <laughs> But it's uh, I show it to uh, Gulnas. You remember um, yeah. a thesis uh, written at the Business School of Arto on business ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. With the definition of business ecosystem. Okay, so, yeah. okay, okay. Gulnas, could you send us the uh, yeah. uh, uh, reference, well, if or, or if or if you have it uh, you as a document, you could send. I can share it right now. For instance, Samis. Mm. The thesis is in English. Yeah, it's with yeah, summary it's and good. finish. Yeah. Mm. Do you have John Taylor's dissertation in an electronic form, Wallace? He sent us three papers, I think. Okay. We have one paper from him already. Yeah, but I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's a different paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was also thinking that in our activity theoretical network we have a, we have a French person who is working in the field of strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Jean-Louis Magagian from Lyon. And, uh, he's in Helsinki or? No, no, he's in, uh, in Lyon. In Lyon? Oh, yes. In France, okay. In France, he's French. Okay. And he's, he's working in this field of strategy in practice. Okay. And I was just wondering that I could I could check if he has this concept of business yes. ecosystem yes. and see what, how he defines it. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not everywhere, I think. Yeah, but, it's but I, I think the situation at that, uh, independently of the definitions, yeah. we yes, can yes. kind of make sense of the relevant yes. dimensions, yes. which we call mm -hmm. <laughs> the BIM mm -hmm. uh, yeah. business or the uh, ecosystem. But, but it's nice to see uh, what kind of dimensions are part mm -hmm. of the system Absolutely. they take up. Jean Louis had this. Uh, I think he was working with this concept of absorptive, uh, absorptive how Cap is it? capability. Yes, yeah. capacity. Yeah. 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 And he yes. uses activity okay. theory. Okay. So he would be maybe a good a colleague to you. I, I, I give you your his okay. address. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, Are we is, done the, more? is the year one from now on the year one? I saw that the <laughs> interviews are already done according to the schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so maybe you uh, uh, cut off. Uh, discuss with goals what uh, in detail about the schedule and when it's real realistic to start the interviews because be before that the kind of framework mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. themes and the historical yeah. framework yes. should be. I and know also be when Gulnas can come to Finland. Yes. Yeah. So one of the problem with uh, Gulnas trip is that she needs a document, an official document that she's working for a project. But the project, I cannot open an account before the ethical committee uh, survey. Okay. So I have to complete uh, <laughs> 20 pages of yeah. everything about the ethical dimension. Okay. Okay. They have, uh, the committee has a meeting at the end of August. And then they will give an answer if it is positive. The finance service will open a budget, mm. and then she can become a research assistant yeah, okay. officially. Okay. For no it's for business administration. I have started to call that ethical terrorism. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So forth, so forth. Uh, so nursing sciences and, and whatever and, and kind of ethical standards yes so we have to tick whether we are using uh, animal or yeah. human tissues yeah, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and yes. x-rays and, and, and we have the, yeah, yeah, totally, in the project. Totally yes and when i wrote the, the project uh, i had to answer a question like will you hurt uh, animals in other countries like you are working in Finland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or seeds, veggies. <laughs> yeah. I was driving a car and there was a bird on the road. <laughs> the no, bird got killed. <laughs> so, yeah. It's maybe useful in other fields like psychology where they... Mm. And also health sciences, of course, if we are yes, studying human illness and treatment. Yeah, but I think, yeah. think if you have a trust, yeah. it's simply yeah. a talk mm. with the, uh, we are studying and make it mm. clear yeah. what's the intention. No mm. such things are needed. Yeah, exactly. There must be trust in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I was doing this very intimate study with the patients, I didn't have, I didn't need an uh, ethical mm. commission, but uh, I made agreements with each patient. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And they were consent, uh, based on consent information. I had to explain them very 
in detail what he's yeah. been doing. Yeah. The researcher uh, must yeah. make explicit yes. Yes. And how he will uh, utilize the mm -hmm. data. How yeah. it will well, of course, we were not affecting their health by giving them medicine or anything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can put your uh, the email you want to use with the platform. And afternoon, I will create the uh, the space for the Skelet project. Do you have the usual address? It is it's okay. Google and that. For Sami, you have. Um, I don't have okay. your, your email. I think. Okay. I can. Or, or, or you send no, 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 Okay. I have a uh, uh, supervisor meeting. Was meeting one o'clock. Okay. And okay. Do you need to have lunch? Yeah, I, I plan to do oh, that. Yeah. I have to look at the, the yeah. office. I have reserved this room for the entire day. Okay. Yeah, so. But I will stay here. I, I will have a meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you are so maybe maybe I can um, arrange the uh, platform to introduce your names and uh, yeah. the, the yeah. project right now. They use it just that because he gets so much email, he, he, he is going to but communicate. The advantage something. of the platform is you you don't receive email. Yes. You load there, and if you want. You have a G plus notification. Yes, I know. But yes, I know. Just that the problem. How do we understand that we should log in? Is there an There's email a message there? coming yeah. to okay. your email? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Or then you. But this good thing that we are uh, in the next room with Sami. Uh, okay. Can also, okay. If Sami calls, then we can yeah. perform. You can also communicate. Okay. You know, you can also talk to me because yeah, yeah, I'm on yeah, the same yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so she's we can already there. Really through this process. If we if we cut the off. The already there. I mean, in fact, you are. Already, you already <laughs> yeah. There. So it, at one day it said that I need a permission, and did you give me a permission? Yes, but I was on on, on a trip. On, uh, I, I can uh, give the permission uh, quickly. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was this uh, so it, uh, it Yes, I remember. Yes. I was struggling with that <laughs> But yeah. I think it's okay for yeah. if you want to, to check the documents. Uh, the floor works at short school. Yeah, sorry, it's my own Yes, we call it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Thank you. Thank you very much for your Have a good day. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good early morning. Okay, thanks. Is it? It's a Google account. It's G plus. You have to have it. Yes. yes, you have to, 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 you have